Good morning from the Envitech headquarters here in Munich on this beautiful November morning. A very special morning because today we talk about our new version Helcan 2311. So first, thanks for being with us to learn everything regarding our updated version. My name is Marcus, I'm part of Envitech's marketing team and as always I'm very happy to guide you through this webinar. Before we start, I have two quick informations for you. You can also type your questions in the GoToWebinar chat because we're going to have a little Q&A session afterwards. Our experts will answer your questions, so please feel free to type in every question you like. Also, please make sure to check your emails in the next days because you will find the recording and the handout regarding this webinar. And now, let's see who are our experts today. And I can already see Jan and hand waiting, so please join me on stage. Hi. All right, guys. Okay. How do you feel? How do you feel, Hen, today? Well, very good. I'm excited about this webinar. Perfect. And you, Jan, how do you feel yeah. about the release? Also really excited. I think we have a lot of great features today to show. So, yeah, I'm Everything. happy. So, we'll see what this webinar will bring. Everything set, then have a good webinar and we see you later for the Q&A session. Thank you, Marcus. Have fun, Thank everybody. You. <laughs> okay. So, let's start with the webinar for today. Here is the presentation. And today we have the Haken 2311 uh, release that we want to, for this release, we want to show you the newest features of Haken. So, with this release, of course, we have new major features that we will show you later. And of course, with every release, we also provide further speed ups and additionally, additional usability improvements. But in this release, we have even more. We have also a lot of exciting news all around the Ambitech ecosystem. So we have the license server cloud ready, we have a new version of the deep learning tool and more things that we like to show you later on. But now let's dive into the newest features of Helgen 2311. Here we have an overview of the newest features. I think you might have seen some in the newsletters already. Uh, first, we have the multi-label classification, an extension for our deep learning based uh, classification. Now you can um, assign multiple labels to one image and during classification you can find multiple effects simultaneously. Second, we have the 3D reconstruction with structured light. With this technology you can reconstruct 3D surfaces with a strip light pattern and a 2D area scan camera for really um, application-specific uh, setups. Then we have uh, new speed-ups with a focus on neon instructions. So especially for embedded devices, we have a better performance now with our operators. And last but not least, we have further improvements for the global context and normally detection. And now let's have a look in our first major feature, the multi-label classification. So, what was already possible with Helken 2305 is a standard classification. So it was possible to classify, is it a min pill, a magnesium pill, a ginseng pill, and so on. You could also train a second model classifying if the pill is good, has a crack, and so on. So you could answer these two questions. But one problem here, during, uh, you had to train two models always. So one model for classify the pill type and another model for classifying the defect type. And you not only had to train two models, you had also to run two models during inference. Now with the newest Haken release, you can train one model to find multiple defects or assign multiple classes to one image. This is the advantage that first you only need to care care for one model and it's also faster because running just one model is faster than running try two models or more. And it also can fulfill another use case and this is it is an alternative for the object detection. So you probably know the object detection, you are labeling bounding boxes inside an image and later on you know where an object is and what type of object is inside the image. If you are only interested of what type of object is inside an image, the new multi-label classification might be an alternative for you. In this case, you only say, in this image we have three um, types of pills. 
and then you train the model and later on during inference the model tells you what type of pills are inside an image. Of course without the specific location. But often you don't need the location so this could be an alternative for you and that's great because you have less labeling effort, you don't have to label each box and also the inference time of the classification is way faster than the object detection. How, it, uh, how this new technology works, we'll hand show you now. Thank you, Jan. <clears throat> exactly like Jan said, the idea of multi-label classification is to assign um, more than just one label, more than just one class to the image, and then we train our network. So the trained network will then for each class uh, predict scores and um, exactly like in the single label classification. However, the main difference here is that for single label classification is that the class with the highest score will be taken as the prediction. However, uh, in multi-label classification, we can have more than just one class, so uh, more class predict predictions are also acceptable. And um, the workflow of the multi-label classification is actually, it follows the standard deep learning workflow in Halkin with the preparation, training, evaluation, and integration. And uh, if we look more closely to the workflow, we can see that for the preparation, we already have two new procedures. The first one to read the data set of the multi-label classification, and the second is to create the deep learning model of the multi-label classification. Afterwards, we can train our model exactly like any other standard, uh, exactly like any other uh, method deep learning in Halkin with our standard operator train the L model. Also, the evaluation works exactly the same, so we use our um, our uh, standard operator evaluate the L model exactly like any other deep learning uh, Halkin model, and then we can also inspect the results. Uh, of our model, we can check the F scores of the different classes, we can check the average F score, we can also display the uh, results of the model on single samples. For example, here we have an image where the ground truth is magnesium and crack. The model has only predicted the magnesium, however, it didn't see any crack, and that's why the prediction is wrong. Um, we inspect our results until we are actually satisfied with the performance of the model. And then we can go over to the integration step uh, where we can apply our model with the apply the L model. Um, so we benchmarked our method, our apply the L model for a multi-label classification on Intel CPUs and uh, NVIDIA GPUs with TensorRT. And we can see for the compact and the enhanced models, uh, we see that uh, the run times are 5 milliseconds and 20 milliseconds for the Intel CPU. However, it gets really faster with the OpenVINU AI accelerator with less than 2 milliseconds and less than 4 milliseconds for both models. And um, the run times on the NVIDIA GPU with TensorRT are basically in the order of 0.5 milliseconds for the compact network and um, around 1 millisecond or less for the enhanced milliseconds. So we're really like uh, this method is really fast and um, with that we don't lose any time, almost any time compared to the uh, single label classification. Thank you and let's summarize what we have seen so far. So the new multi-label classification is a new method, deep learning based within Halkin. It has a really low inference as we have seen at the previous slide. So with the GPU you have around one or two milliseconds only. Um, you, you only have to care for one data set, uh, for one model. So you train one model, you run mo one model during inference. And this new technology could be also an alter alternative for the op deep learning based object detection. That's so far uh, about our uh, multi-label classification and the second new feature of Halkin is a 3D reconstruction with structured light. Structured light methods are already part of Halkin for a long time. So Halkin already provides a deflectometry method 
Here we are pro um, projecting a strip-like pattern on a specular surface, and then we can find defects on this specular surface. With Helken 2311, we extended this model now, and now it's possible to pro um, project a strip-like pattern on a um, diffuse surface, and later on you can reconstruct the diffuse uh, the first surface, uh, reconstruct the 3D model of this object. And this technology is especially useful when you have application-specific setups. So you can't use a standard 3D sensor, it's not good enough, it doesn't have the um, required field of view, then you could use this new technology to create your own application-specific setup. And once again, Hand is showing you how you can use this new technology in Hacken. Yep, thank you, Jan. So exactly like Jan said, um, the two main differences between um, the deflectometry and the 3D reconstruction are basically in the setup. So in the setup we have uh, for deflectometry a display or a monitor where we display the stripes, the patterns, and uh, for the 3D reconstruction we have a projector that projects the stripes on the uh, surface. The second main difference is basically the objective of the, mo uh, of the method. So for deflectometry, the objective is to detect defects on a specular surface, so basically to inspect a specular surface. However, for 3D reconstruction, the objective is, is to generate a 3D object model of a diffuse surface. How does it work? What do we need for that? We basically need different sets of pattern images. Um, in general, we need the phase shift images, we need the gray code images. Sometimes we also need the sing uh, single stripe if we're not uh, satisfied with the, uh, with the quality of the reconstruction only with these two uh, type of images. And then we can have our 3D reconstruction um, starting from these pattern images. The workflow of the 3D reconstruction uh, basically start with the calibration. The calibration of this uh, setup is very similar to the calibration of a stereo setup for the uh, reconstruction. So both the projector and the camera will be defined as Halken camera models. Then the stripe patterns will be projected on the calibration plates in all poses and the images will be acquired from the camera. And then uh, the poses for both models will be estimated based on the different poses uh, of the different poses of the calibration plates. Um, these models that we already estimated will be uh, uh, then uh, used for the reconstruction workflow. And of course, we offer a calibration standard example to guide you through the calibration process, as well as we can also offer the standard example for the workflow uh, process. <coughs> The workflow is very easy to configure and to apply. The first step is to create a structured light model and then to configure this model. So basically we need to uh, configure the stripe patterns that we will be projecting. We need to give the uh, decoding of the gray code images. We need to give the defect images, but just uh, for deflectometry. And we also need to set the calibration models that we already calculated in the calibration step. Next, we need to generate the pattern images that we will be projecting on the surface. And then we are done with our offline phase. In our online phase, the first thing we need to project and acquire the images. So basically we project the stripes and then acquire the images. Uh, of the different types of patterns. Afterwards, we can compute the modulation score. I'll come back to this later because it's a very important step. After computing the modulation, we can decode the acquired images and then based on the decoded patterns, we can reconstruct the 3D model. Now back to the modulation. So first of all, this is an optional step, although it's important. <laughs> and um, we can reconstruct the 3D objects without having a modulation. However, we risk 
that the uh, we risk to have outliers and reconstruction errors in area that weren't very good illuminated uh, as we can see here on the slide so um, this error or these outliers we can avoid them with using the modulation which is basically um, which is basically a quality score. So from the moment where we have input images, input striped images, we can, uh, we can uh, calculate for each pixel a value that indicates the quality of each pixel for the reconstruction, which we call modulation score. It is normalized between zero and one. And uh, this score can help us know what are the pixels that will uh, give good reconstruction results and what are the pixels that will give bad reconstruction results. These last pixel, pixels are basically the pixels that were in shadowed areas or in, uh, in um, occluded areas. So they weren't very good illuminated and we didn't see any stripe contrast on these pixels. Therefore, we, have, we don't have very uh, much information about these pixels and we can ignore them actually from the reconstruction to avoid uh, outliers and errors. On the slide, we can see an example of a modulation value uh, for modulation map. Uh, so the red areas are basically the, the uh, pixels with the low quality uh, of reconstruction, where we didn't have any information about the contrast of the patterns. And the gray pixels are the pixels that we will be using for the uh, reconstruction. Here in this example, we set the modulation threshold to 0 0.5. However, we can adjust it as well. So after we reduce the domain of uh, the pattern images with these areas, we can continue with the reconstruction step. And the side effect of the modulation is that since we have less pixels to reconstruct, uh, the reconstruction will be then faster. And finally, I wanted to show you the result without the modulation map and the result with the modulation map. And we can see that it's much preciser and more accurate with the modulation map. So we would recommend it, actually. Thank you, Hint, for this good uh, detailed instruction how to use this technology. Now let's sum up what we have seen um, about this uh, 3D structured light reconstruction. So this technology is especially made for application-specific setups. So whenever you can't use a, a specific 3D sensor and you need to create your own setup. And why is it good? Because it's a good scalability, scalability. So you can use it for square millimeter setups up to square meter setups. So you have a lot of flexibility. It also has a good lateral resolution. So you can also find really fine structures here, for example, on the right side, you can see the coin and even the small stars can be detected or reconstructed with this new technology. Last but not least, it's also a very fast technology. So you get um, up to 10 frames per second and more with the technology, depending on how many images you are using for the reconstruction. So far, so good. Now let's jump over to the speed ups that we have with our newest hacking release, here especially with a focus on NEON instructions. And those who are not familiar with NEON instructions, it's an instruction set that is basically used on ARM-based devices. So we have a lot of um, speedups for this type of instruction set, but we also have some speedups for AVX-based uh, uh, instruction sets, so for AVX, for x86-based systems, so Intel or AMD. And once again, Hand is showing you the speedups and some further usability improvements. Yes, exactly. So with the, with the new Halkin version, uh, Halkin filtering operators are now faster with the NAON instruction, so for ARM devices. <coughs> for example, the emphasis is up to 175% faster uh, for byte images. But that's not all, because also our matching operators are now faster with NEON instructions. For example, the find entity model or models is now by up to 80% uh, faster for byte images for larger templates. 
and uh, also the shape-based matching is now uh, faster with the new release but not only for the neon instructions however also for the AVX instructions for the um, a uh, x86 architectures so um, and for both byte and unit 2 images actually ellipse fitting is also now faster with this uh, version uh, for, with the algorithms Kiyuba, Geometric and GeoTurkey and also the performance of apply metrology model is improved and benefited from the speed up for elliptical models um, just a quick reminder apply metrology model is a measuring operator for Herken so the next improvement is actually not a speed up however a very cool usability improvement um, so many, param uh, so many operators, for example, the generate operators and the distance operators now support broadcasting parameters. For example, what does it mean broadcasting parameters? For example, we have the case that we would love to generate two ellipses in two different um, locations, however, with the same radius. Until now, we had to enter the radius two times in a tuple and um, so this is not required anymore with the new version. So we only have to enter the radius just once and it will be valid for both ellipses. So it gives us a better readable code and overall better usability. Thank you. That's about the speed ups. And also in the field of deep learning, we have some improvements here. I already mentioned one, it's the improvement of the global context anomaly detection. For those who are not familiar with the technology, it's one of our core deep learning technologies to find really complex anomalies within images. So here we have three examples. For example, we can find if the pin is missing, if the bottle is empty, and maybe if a PCB has a crack or a defect. So you only need good images with this technology, train with good images, and later on you can basically find any type of defect. And with our newest uh, Haken release, we could further improve the accuracy of this deep learning model. So we are always comparing ourselves to the academic state of the art. And already with our latest uh, last Haken release, we had a performance better than all the state of the art paper. Now with the newest release, we could further improve this accuracy and get an even better performance with our models. And here it's really nice because the new improved model does not take any longer. So it's, you have the same speed for your application, but you can reach a higher accuracy. And maybe how can you see this better result? So here I have one example for you. Um, we used our global context anomaly detection to find the missing pins in the images. At the top, you can see the resulting heat maps. And on the left-hand side, there's the 2305 heat map. And on the right-hand side, the 2311 heat map. And you can see on the left side, there's a lot more noise within the heat map. And on the right side, there are, the, uh, are only two major spots inside anymore, which are basically showing where the uh, missing pin should be. That's one improvement, but I think we have even more. I think two more, and this our hand is showing you. Yep. So the first improvement is that uh, deep counting is now supported on Hilo chip. Basically, um, we support now the precision int 8, so we can optimize this model for this precision. However, please make sure to give the deep learning samples as inputs in the optimize operator for the calibration. And this int 8 precision is also now supported with TensorRT and not only with Halo. So, um, how can the next improvement is that Halcon 2311 uses newer CUDA and TensorRT versions. So with that, we support now the latest NVIDIA architectures, for example, the GeForce uh, RTX 40 series and the embedded board with uh, Jetpack 5. Okay, that's about deep learning. And also in our other core technologies like Bar and Data Code, we have some improvement in this release. Here for the data code this time, we focused on the ECC 200 and here especially on the irregular uh, alternating pattern. 
So the alternating pattern basically has always the same distance between each uh, module. You, you marked it here. But in some applications, you have the problem that the printer is not correctly uh, set up. And so the distance between e each module is not the same every time. So with the newest hacking release, we are providing a new parameter called alternating pattern tolerance. And this parameter can set to low, medium, or high, depending how much tolerance you want to allow. And then you can get better results uh, with uh, irregularly alternating pattern. So we have one example here for you with the 2305 release and now with the new 2311. This Please code welcome. could be read. Just ah, sorry, <laughs> there was a button missing. Uh, this code could be read and um, as you can see at the top left here, there's no distance between the two models. That's not a problem anymore for the new algorithms. And also for the barcode we have an improvement. Yes, exactly. So we have a further improvement for the stack GS1 data barcodes, uh, especially for print growth and for print loss. So these actually are defects, are printing defects. And um, well, Halcon 2311 now deals better with these uh, grown bars and with the shrunk bars. And now the difficult uh, barcodes Stack barcodes could be read with the new version. Thank you. And we also have some new standard examples within Haken now. This time on the one side we focused on battery production because battery production is one topic many of our customers are interested in. And we realized we, had been, we went to many trade fairs, talked to many customers, and we, are, um, we think that Haken can solve most of the battery tasks already and therefore we created new standard examples for you to show you how you can solve standard battery tasks with Haken. The first one inspect and identify battery cells. It shows how you can run two tasks simultaneously using threads. The one task is inspecting the data code at the bottom of the battery and the second task running simultaneously is the oh, sorry is the uh, defect detection at the top of the battery. So here we are basically aligning the battery with shape matching and later on looking for the defects at the top of the battery. Then we also have a, another example, the detect, uh, def detect 3D defects on battery surface example. And this time it's a 3D based uh, battery inspection task. So we have a 3D sensor acquiring images and later on finding the defects on this surface of the 3D model. That's the one area we created new examples for. And another one are hyperspectral images. So hyperspectral cameras for those who don't know. So a standard camera usually provides one channel, so a mon monochrome camera or three channels. And a hyperspectral camera provides multiple hundreds of channels or can provide up to multiple hundreds of channels. Then for each pixel, you get a specific spectrum, as you can see here on the left side. And with this spectrum, you can classify different types of material. So in the new standard example, we show you how to use um, the spectrum, how you can transform the spectrum, and also how you can use the spectrum to classify different types of pills. So once again, classification of pills. Um, yeah, and what else? Um, also, Haken, what I, should, I wanted to show, uh, tell you, also, Haken does support multiple hyperspectral cameras that are supporting the Gigi, Vision, um, the Gigi Vision interface. And we also can use NV image files for hyperspectral cameras. So that's basically the standard file format for hyperspectral data. That's so far about the newest features of Haken 2311. But as said as in the beginning, we also have a lot of other features within our Haken MVTech ecosystem um, that are also beneficial for Haken. So first of all, the license server cloud ready, you have probably already heard about. Then we have an additional dongle now that we offer. We have a new version of the software manager and also a new version of the deep learning tool. So have a look, let's have a look in the new ser license server cloud ready. Why 
are we providing this new license server? So we at MVTech basically see three major use cases for our customers. First, centralized processing. So that's a scenario where you already have your machines running, but every several days you want to collect all the images and do some heavy um, image processing analyzation on um, maybe some finding some general anomalies inside the images. Therefore, you're sending all your images to a cloud and doing the processing there because there you have enough um, processing power to do the, all these uh, calculations really fast. A second scenario is a vision as a service. In this case, you're deploying your application on an edge device or maybe a smartphone. And this smartphone is maybe not uh, powerful enough to execute a heavy deep learning model and therefore you're sending all your images from your smartphone to the cloud, doing the uh, processing there and then sending the results back. And last but not least, uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. Here the build and the test of your software code runs in a cloud environment and is later automatically deployed in the um, fabric uh, lab. Okay. Um, how does it look like with Haken? So here you maybe have an Azure cloud, an AWS cloud and so on. So it's basically, it basically works in every cloud environment. Um, and then you have a, maybe a vision as a service. So you run a process in your cloud environment. And of course, this process needs a Haken license. Therefore, you have to install one MVTech license server and this license server can provide all the licenses to all your processes within the same cloud environment. So maybe you have a second um, process running for build and testing and also this uh, process gets the license from the MVTech license server. So we offered the MVTech license server I think for one more than one year now and this old license server or that didn't support the cloud required a dongle. And usually when you're working in Azure or another cloud environment, you can't connect your dongle to this environment. And therefore we have a solution now. So with the new license server, you don't need a dongle, you can use one, but as an alternative, you can also use, connect to our MVTech cloud backend. This cloud backend verifies your MVTech license server. And so you don't need any hardware connection to the actual cloud. So this has multiple advantages. So first of all, you have the full control over the uh, license server. So you can make sure that the license server is always running in your pr uh, own public cloud. Then the new uh, MVTech license server supports every Haken version from 10.2.0.5 progress and newer. And also new, this new license server does not only support SDKs, but also runtime. So you can deploy your runtime with the new MVTech license server that is now cloud ready. But take care, this runtime licenses that are uh, bought for the license servers are only subscription based. So the lifetime licenses are only dongle based or another um, licensing method, but for the license server, you can only buy uh, subscription based runtime licenses. And now you say, Maybe I don't use the cloud, but I already have my license server dongle based in my um, own environment running. Are there any other news? Yes. We also um, added Prometheus metrics endpoints to our latest license server. So what is it used for? It's used for um, monitor your license usage. So now you can see who is using a license from your license server if your license server is in a good state, health state, and so on. And this visualization you could do, for example, with a Grafana dashboard, which is the standard software for visualizing Prometheus metrics endpoints. Here at the bottom, you can see the endpoints. So it's good to monitor your license server. And also another news for you. So when you're uh, working in the cloud, you're often interested in, interested in using Docker. So Docker is a container environment to uh, virtualize your software, make it easier to deploy and so on. And many customers asked us, how can we use Helken in a Docker environment? And so we extended our um, installation guide that explains now how you can use 
Falcon in a Docker environment. And so you can easily deploy your application later on in a cloud environment or maybe on an edge device with Docker. Then, as mentioned before, we also have an additional dongle now that we offer. This is a robust metal dongle. It has, it has an attachable keychain, it's attachable to a keychain or wire lock, and it's available for all Helken versions. And last but not least, we also extended the warranty for the new dongle. Now it's three years, but not only for the new dongle. Also for all existing dongles, now the warranty is three years. So for the orange Helken dongle, for the new metal dongle, and also for the Merlick dongle. Then we also have some news with the, for the software manager. Here, first of all, we improved the user interface. So now um, you can see more clearly what installation is, uh, what product is active at the moment. I can see if your product is uh, globally installed or just for the local user. And also new, you can define profiles for each product. And now is the question, why do I need to uh, define a, pro a profile for a product? That's really useful for multiple reasons. First of all, with a profile you can define which environment variables you want to use when you start up Helken the next time. So for example, you have multiple licenses, one license for uh, a cloud, with one cloud license, another dongle-based license, and then you can always switch between these licenses with profiles. Another use case is when you have, for example, you wrote your own extension package, so your own Helken operators, and then you can um, say where are the extension package located, so easily switch between different setups and so on. And you can even remove uh, the standard variables like Helken root from the startup. And now, one last thing, we also have a new version of the deep learning tool. Here, with the newest version, we now support the whole workflow for semantic segmentation, and we also have the new smart labeling tool hover and click now in our standard version of the deep learning tool. What does it mean? So now we have the whole workflow of semantic segmentation within the deep learning tool means you can not only label uh, semantic segmentation, you can also train and evaluate semantic segmentation. And later on, when you are happy with your results, you can export them and use them with an Helken or Merlick. And the new uh, labeling tool, hover and click, it's really nice. You can see a GIF on the left hand side. So you basically, it's used for semantic segmentation as well. So you click once on the object you want to segmentate, and then you can refine the location that you want to segment with multiple clicks. So it's really easy, really fast, and it saves you a lot of time for the time consuming segmentation task, segmentation labeling task. Yeah, I think now we are basically at the end of the webinar. So here once again an overview about all the features that are part of Helken 2311 and also our other product updates. So we have the multi-label classification and new deep learning based uh, method. We have the 3D reconstruction with structured light, a reconstruction method for your own application specific setups. We have a lot of speedups for Neon, but also for AVX and some usability improvements. We have a new version of the global context anomaly detection that is now even better. The license server is now cloud ready, so you can use a dongle based version, but you can also use um, the cloud ready uh, licensing method. Then we have a new additional dongle, a metal one. We have an enhanced uh, software manager with profiles. And we also have a new version of the deep learning tool now supporting semantic segmentation. Thank you for listening. Now I have one last uh, question for you. So could you please fill up this survey here? So we will uh, also send the link into the chat. And then uh, later on, I think in five minutes, we are continuing with the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you.